that song before. Did we do it once before? Uh, it's a good reminder that God is greater. Amen. He's greater than anything we face. Amen. And he hasn't abandoned you. Sure. Right. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forgotten about you. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Glory to God. Well, welcome to Faith Bible Church. And Friday nights with Jesus. Amen. The true happy hour has indeed begun. And so uh, as we're welcoming you here, we welcome all of you out there in the social media sphere. And we're going to encourage you as we encourage the folks here in the sanctuary to get out your Bible. Amen. The basic instructions before leaving earth. The B-I-B-L-E. Amen. And if you don't have a Bible, BibleGateway.com will get you there too. You just type in the scripture references and they'll come up for you. Amen. We put a value. We put a premium on the Word of God here at Faith Bible Church. It's why we put it on the sign out front. Faith. Jesus said, when the Son of Man returns to the earth, will he find faith? And I have purposed and I have determined, and I hope you have as well, that he will find faith here. Amen. Amen. He'll find faith in me. Amen. And that he'll find me faithful. Amen. Amen. Don't you want to hear those words? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to hear those words. Mm -hmm. It's strong in me. And it should be strong in all of us. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, Bible. Bible. God's holy written word. It's not man's opinion. It's not interpretation. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 says that the word of God is inspired by God. Amen. And holy men wrote it down as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. That word inspired, if you look it up in the Greek, literally is translated breathed. God breathed his holy written word. And men wrote it down. Amen. And I think it's important to know, because this is a Bible study, that there are over 40 different authors in the Bible. It was written over 1,500 years on three different continents. And there's not one contradiction from Adam to Armageddon, from Genesis to Revelation. It is all truth. Amen. Amen. And it's truth that you can govern <clears throat> your life by. And why is that important? Because nobody sat down to write a book called the Bible. Amen. Moses wrote the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, and they were used by the Jews. Amen. God, God spoke to Moses and he wrote things down and they were used by way of instruction to keep us as guardrails, the New Testament says, until Jesus came to the earth. Amen. Glory to God. And then you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Gospels, the good news is that God sent his son, Jesus, Jesus, to the earth. And his whole mission coming to the earth was to seek and save that which is lost. And to introduce the earth to our Heavenly Father. Amen? Because there have been some misconceptions about God. That he was this big, mean, angry, terrible, come on. And that's not who our Heavenly Father is. It, amen? Amen? I see a couple of people shaking their heads. I can hear them out there in you know, social media world. They're shaking. God is not this big, mean, angry, looking to smack you on the top of your head when you act up and get out of line. Come on. He doesn't break your leg to teach you a lesson. doesn't give you cancer to, so that you'll love him more. Hello, some of you are parents. Would you break your kid's leg to teach him a lesson? Come on. Would you give him cancer if they you know, make him love you more? Come on. That's not who our Heavenly Father is. And so Jesus unveiled and unfurled the Father to us. Amen. Hallelujah. And we actually see through the eyes of Jesus that looking at the Old Testament that God is good. And he is good all the time. Amen. I said he's good. Somebody got to help me preach tonight. He is good all the time. Amen. Not sometimes. Right now when he's in the mood, he is good all the time. It is his nature. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said God is love. That's who your heavenly father is. He is, Jesus, the embodiment of the love of God. And he came to show us who our heavenly father is and what our relationship to him is. Amen. So we started a series uh, some weeks ago now called The Lord is... My key.
keeper, or the Lord my keeper on Friday nights. And uh, I think there's a couple of more that we need to get out. Uh, but I want you to open up your Bibles and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Amen. The Apostle Paul writing to a young minister named Timothy. Amen. And so Paul writes this, or the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul writes this in verse 12, For which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. And I may need to stop right there, because if you back up and you read the context here, you'll find out that Paul is talking about being persecuted for preaching the gospel. Amen? Persecution has been going on for a long time in the earth. And we may as well just get it settled. If you're going to be a Christian and you're going to live in this world, you are going to be persecuted for being a Christian. That's not to give you a martyr complex. You know, some Christians think that, you know, just because uh, they're here that the devil's chasing them. No, no, no. I'm talking about preaching the gospel, being salt and light in the earth. You're going to be called all kinds of names. By the way, you should develop a thick skin. I don't know, maybe try this over here. It's not really working over here. <laughs> you need, need to develop a thick skin, right? Because you're going to be called all kinds of names, amen? Intolerant or bigoted. Uh, you, you, you pick it. Narrow, closed-minded, I don't know. Jesus said narrow is the way to salvation. That's what Jesus said. I, I didn't write it. He, he said it. He said narrow. He said wide is the way to destruction. Which tells me, by the way, that there are two paths, but they don't lead to heaven. There's only one that leads to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Amen. And if you believe in me, you'll have everlasting life. Amen. Mm -hmm. So there is a narrow way. So I guess, in a sense, I am narrow. That's pretty good stuff right there. <laughs> I guess, in, in a way, I, I am narrow. Amen. I'm narrow and I'm saved. Okay. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I've come to expect persecution. Yep. Sometimes I get the, the, you know, the most awful emails. That's the new thing now, you know, emails. <laughs> and, and especially now, you know, you're out there in the social media world. And, uh, you know, Richie and James and Chrissy did this wonderful thing with the website and Twitter and Instagram and all these things that I don't know about. Uh, you get all kinds of fan mail. <laughs> you know, and, and all kinds of doctrine. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and that's false doctrine, and this is false doctrine, and, and people out there that want to argue with you about silly stuff, right? Persecution is going to come. Right. Amen. And it's here, and it's not going away. Mm -hmm. Amen? But I noticed something, because people, by the way, with their persecution will try to, try to shame you. Come, come on. They'll try to shame Oh, you're a Christian? Oh, you must be bigoted. <laughs> You, you must be intolerant. You don't believe that a woman should slaughter a baby in the womb? You believe that there was an ark and there was animals on it? What are you, insane? Huh? <laughs> Come on. People say that, I, they say the wildest things to you. Did you notice this here? He said, I'm not ashamed. Amen. He said, I'm not ashamed. Do you know the only way you can get shamed? is if you accept it. Oh, this is good teaching. Mm -hmm. If you accept it. Come on. Amen. Uh, many times you need to be, uh, well, like the, the lion that's going through the jungle and the ant that's mouthing off to the lion. Does, does a lion pay heed or pay attention to the ant? No. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes you got to be like that duck where the water runs right off the bay. Listen, you just, I, listen, I have been criticized by experts. Mm -hmm. As Brother Hagin used to say, these little old spurts, they don't bother me none. Amen? You just got to let it roll off your back. And by the way, just because somebody wants to argue with you, I'm just humping something tonight, that doesn't mean you have to engage them. Amen. Amen. And if you're going to engage them, engage them with truth. But even Jesus said that you might be throwing pearls in front of swine. Now, is Jesus calling people pigs? He's like, no, no, no. He's a pig doesn't recognize the value of a pearl. Right? And the word of God is pearls of truth. Amen. So some people are not going to recognize it as such. Right? And you're going to get persecuted for it. Should you be ashamed of it? No. No, sir. 
No, sir. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he says, I'm not ashamed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not ashamed. You don't have to duck your head. You don't have to bow down. Some people will not hear you. Just keep moving forward. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I listen, I believe God. <laughs> I gotta come out there again. <laughs> I believe God. I believe his holy written word. It got quiet in this Presbyterian. I believe God. And I believe his holy written word. I will make that stand. Amen. I will stand under the crimson stained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ and say, He is the way. He is the truth. Amen. And if you'll trust your soul to him, well, we're about to find out about it. He'll keep it for you. Yeah. Amen. Ha hallelujah. Glory to God. The marketplace will shout back at you. The world will shout back at you. How can you possibly believe that? How can you possibly believe that? I see. I just, I just do. I do. Well, how can you believe in something like a spirit God that you know doesn't have any physical body? And how, how can that this this spirit? How, how can that have an effect on your body? How can, how can spirit have effect on the physical? Well. If you can tell me how emotions have effect on the physical, well, come on, hallelujah, I better leave that alone, but you're picking up rocks, glory to God. He said, I know in whom I have believed. The apostle Paul had now come past believing and started knowing in who he believed. He believed in God. He believed in his son, Jesus. How do you know this? Well, if you read anything about the apostles, you'll see that all of them died horrible deaths except for John. The most amazing thing about the early Christian church is that in spite of death, in spite of being sawn in half, in spite of being thrown to wild animals in, in Colosseums, in spite of all the persecution they faced, they would, uh, that they faced, they would not recant their faith in Christ. And it went around the whole world. Those Christians are different. They will not recant Jesus. They won't disavow his name. Even when we burn them at the stake. Even when we crucify them upside down. Even when we boil them in oil. They will not recant the name of Christ. Whew. Glory to God. We having fun? Aren't you glad you're not being boiled in oil? <laughs> <laughs> the early church, I tell you, when I get to heaven, you have a conversation with some of these folks that were in the early church, right? They're going to talk about, yeah, look at you with your soft cushions and your air conditioning and your carpeting. I was eaten by a lion. <laughs> right? And you say you had it rough because you were there on a Friday night at 7 o'clock and pastor ministered for a whole hour. The Apostle Paul ministered all night one night. He ministered for so long that a young man that was sleeping in the window fell out. <laughs> but he fell asleep and fell out of the window <laughs> and died. <laughs> what? Yeah. And so what did Paul do? Didn't miss a beat. Went down, laid his hands on him, raised him from the dead. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, God... It says here in the voice translation, I am not ashamed because I know him and I have put my trust in him and I am fully certain that he has the ability to protect what I have placed in his care. He has the ability to protect what I have placed in his care. Not everybody, not everything is in the care of God, is it? Not everybody on the planet believes that there is a God. Not everybody on the planet has put their faith in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not everybody has entrusted their life to him. There is Christians out there. Aren't you glad we're being taught this, that we know now to take our family and put it into the trust of God? Our businesses and put them into the trust of God. Amen. 
Uh, hallelujah. Our children, we put them into the trust of God. Our relationships, we put them into the trust of God. Aren't you glad? Because when we entrust those things to him, the Bible teaches us he's able to keep them. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, he's not able to keep everything. And he's not able to keep everyone. He's only able to keep what I give him. He's only able to keep what you give him. Amen? So, what you put into his care is what will be kept. Whoo! <laughs> what you put into his care will be kept. Amen? The devil is sly, he is crafty, and he mixes with just enough truth into this with his false doctrine and lies to have us believe the wrong thing. That God is only able, listen to me, God is only able, God is only able to keep that which has been entrusted to him. It answers the question, why do bad things happen even to good people? And Jesus addressed it in Luke 13. I don't want to go back there tonight, but just we'll parenthetically insert this. Right? There was a bunch of people that had come to Jesus and said, did you hear that Pilate killed a bunch of Jews that were in the temple worshiping the Lord with, with sacrifice, and he mingled their blood with the blood of the sacrifice. In other words, he butchered them in the temple. And Jesus said, do you think that there were not worse sinners? Huh? Do you think it's because they were so evil that this is the reason that this happened to them? And he answered right away, no. That's not the reason. He said, unless you repent. We talked last time about this gift of repentance. Amen. That repentance, if we get out from under the care of God, repentance gets us right back in. Somebody help me with this. Right? When you get out from under the, the, the care of God, when you begin to step out and do things your own way, and, you, and you're, you're busy with, with your sin, and doing all the things that we're not supposed to be doing, repentance gets us back under the umbrella, gets us back under the covering of God. Are you listening to me? Right? And then Jesus goes on and says, you know that tower that fell in Siloam and there was 18 people that were killed when the tower fell? Does that sound familiar? Planes flying into buildings, anybody? Does that sound, does that sound, well, where was God when that happened? Where was God when that happened? I got that question over and over again. Well, where, where, where was God when that happened? He was in heaven. He had warned us. We weren't listening. And there's people down here that do things all the time that are out of the will of God. I said there's people down here that do things all the time that are out of the will of God. Rape a child. Molest a child. Are you listening to me? Kidnap someone. Murder someone. Steal from someone. People down here all the time doing things that are not of God. Bad things. Why do bad things happen to good people? Jesus told me there's evil in the earth. There's, e there's evil in the earth. So when that tower fell and those 13 people got killed, he said, Were they, weren't, weren't there worse sinners in Jerusalem when that tower fell and killed those people? No. No, that, no, no, that's not it. That's not the answer. There's evil out there. Bad things are out there. Help me talk, somebody. There's enough, <laughs> there's enough in the air, the water, the food, <laughs> on the planet right now to snuff us out. How is it that we're protected? He's able to keep that which we put into his care. Well, pastor, why do bad things happen to good people? The question is, why was God not able to protect them? If you're taking notes, you might want to write that down. Why was God, the right question is why was God not able to protect them? Are you listening to me? There's lots of stuff down here that is not the will of God. Amen? Hallelujah. And so, uh, why do bad things happen to good people? Some would say that, you know, there's there's no rhyme, there's no reason to it. You know, there's, uh, you know, that, why, why is it that that tornado went through that trailer park and killed that mother of four and she was a single mom and she was working hard and she got killed. Was it because she was a terrible sinner? No. That's not what the scriptures say. The scriptures say there's evil in the earth. 
There's a devil out there. Jesus described him in John's Gospel, the 10th chapter, the 10th verse. He said, he said, the thief. Jesus believes that Satan is a thief. He says, the thief comes to bless you. To steal. Oh, no, no. To steal, to kill, to destroy. Mm -hmm. Now listen, if Jesus is talking, don't you think we should pay attention? Right? Should we put some weight on those words? Right? If you have a red letter edition of the Bible, you see those letters, I mean, those words, they're all in red. So if Jesus is talking, we should be listening. He said, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So, if it's killing you, yeah. help me talk. Mm -hmm. If it's stealing from you, if it's destroying your life, Jesus said there is an evil one out there, and he does evil things. And repentance is the key to protect you. Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Getting under the cover. Uh, that, I titled tonight's message, Under His Wings. Because I, I saw a theme. Back in the beginning when we started this series, and we'll get there tonight. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. It's starting to get excited. I feel my help coming. <laughs> Amen. It's just landed on me. Full bore. You better strap in. Here we go. <laughs> you get your seatbelts? You guys good? All right, here you go. If your hair might get pulled back, but you'll be all right. And it might go around the corner, but you'll be all right. Amen? Hallelujah. Under his wings is where we're safe. Under his wings is where we are protected. Amen? Why? There's evil in the earth. And it's happening all the time. Listen, we talked about this. By the time I get through delivering this teaching... 60 minutes will have ticked off. And in 60 minutes, 14,000 people will have died. 14,000. In the next hour, will die. All across the globe. 14,000 people every hour die on the earth. Every hour, every day. You go, well, how can God let that happen? If you read Genesis, you'll see that that wasn't his original blueprint. You'll see that nobody was supposed to die, but Adam sinned, broke fellowship with God, and death entered into the earth. The curse came in to the earth. We looked two sessions ago that we're kept from the curse. Amen. Amen. Why? Because Galatians 3.13 tells us that Jesus became a curse for us when he hanged on the cross. Amen. And he took our punishment. Oh, aren't you glad? Yes. That he took our punishment on the cross. Amen. Uh, and now we're kept from the curse. Amen? Uh, hallelujah. So, uh, I want you to turn to the book of Psalms. We're probably going to spend the rest of the time that we are together tonight in the book of Psalms. So, are you ready? Apparently nobody's ready. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> right? In Psalm 17, and in verse 4. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Is there a destroyer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it would seem that by the words of my lips, I have been kept away from the paths of the destroyer. By his word, we are kept off the path of the destroyer, one translation says. Verse 5 says, Uphold my steps in your paths that my footsteps may not slip. So, there are two paths out there, aren't there? Amen? And one of them, a destroyer's running the show on. And there's another path. Somebody say there's another path. Another. It's a better path. Yes. It's God's path. It's the place where we're protected, where our feet don't slip. Where the enemy doesn't come in. Listen, Jonathan Edwards preached a sermon up here in Sturbridge, Massachusetts called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And it was based off of this scripture, right? If the Holy One of Israel was to, was to remove his hand and allow your feet to slip. And he just began, and by the way, it was a manuscript sermon, so he wasn't exercised when he was preaching. He was just reading his manuscript. And as he read his sermon, people began to grab onto the pillars of the church as they felt themselves slipping down into hell. And they were crying out, what must I do to be saved? And the second great awakening was born right here in Connecticut. Are you listening to me? 
Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that God, we sung about it uh, just a little minute ago, that God is able to keep you. Amen. He is able to protect you. Somebody say it out loud. The Lord, the Lord is, is my keeper. My keeper. All right, that was a little weak. The Lord, the Lord is, is my keeper. And we're getting a little bit better. Right? You're, 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 you're gonna, gonna let me believe you. Okay? The Lord, the Lord is, is my keeper. keeper. Yeah, he's my no, no. He's my keeper. He keeps me. He protects me. He guards me. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Uh, so, what happens if you're not on His path? Are there many ways to go? Yeah. The Bible says that there are many plans in a man's heart, but they end in destruction. In other words, your best thinking might get you into places that you ought not be. I, I talked to the men at Teen Challenge about this once a month. I'll be going down there again on, on Wednesday the 3rd. We're going to be talking about it again. If your best thinking... As God came into Teen Challenge, if guns and drugs and alcohol have become a way of life, you might want to pay attention. <laughs> because your best thinking is either going to get you into this ministry, aren't you glad you're saved and in the ministry, right? Or prison, or a six-foot grave. There's not, not a whole lot of options. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I'm kept. It says here, I have called upon you and you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand, O you who save those who trust in you for those who rise up against them. God will keep you if you trust him to keep you and he'll protect you against those who rise up against you right there's that wonderful scripture in, in Isaiah in, in 54 it says no weapon formed against you shall prosper am I right, right. no weapon formed against you uh, I don't know how many times I have stood on that scripture spoken that scripture out amen these last 25 years of walking with God why? Well, number one, the path that I was on, I was going to die. I shouldn't be standing here in front of you tonight. I should be dead already. I should be in hell. Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus interrupted my life. I don't know about any of you. <laughs> Some of you had a rough week this week. I can see it on your face. You're in the right place. Amen. Amen. Doing the right thing. Glory to God. Right. But this scripture, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It tells me several things. Number one, weapons will be formed. Yeah. Weapons will be formed. It says no weapon formed against you. So there will be weapons formed against you. And who forms those weapons? Oh, the enemy, your adversary. Satan forms weapons. He sets traps and snares. Mm -hmm. Amen. But no weapon formed against me will be successful. Amen? Mm -hmm. I said, okay. You're not going to come along. I'm going to pull you along. <laughs> no weapon formed against me will prosper. It tells me that when my enemy forms weapons against me, he just doesn't sit on them. He doesn't stockpile them. He doesn't sit there, right, like, like the arms race that's going on in the earth. You know, we got these big stockpiles of weapons. No, no, no. He forms weapons, and then he sends them. And he sends them at me. He sends them at you. Whether you recognize them or not, they're coming. And what does the Bible teach me? That any weapon come in my way that the adversary has sent in my direction, he protects me from it. He protects me from it. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory. It, yeah, I wrote this down. It didn't hit the target. Right? 
Satan has you in his crosshairs. Think about this, right? It, he, listen, he knows your flesh. He knows what trips you up the easiest, right? And he forms weapons against you, and he sends them down. He sends them the military calls. He sends it downrange, right? It's coming at you, baby, oh, yeah. right? And you know that he has spent a bunch of time forming that weapon. He has spent a bunch of time siding that weapon in. He has set the trap. He has seen to it that you're in the right place at the right time to meet that thing when it's coming at you. And God shows up, swats it out of the sky, <laughs> stops it from hitting you, steers it off course. We learned, remember uh, in our series back, uh, all of us back in the beginning of the year, I think, uh, angels and demons, we learned that angels hearken to the voice of the Lord, right? They're listening for the word of God so that they can enact the word of God. Is that right? Isn't that what angels are supposed to do here in the earth? Now listen, I know that some of this goes maybe outside of your, your theology. Maybe it goes outside of something you've never heard of before. But there is evil in the earth. And there is also good in the earth. There is an evil force on the earth made up of demons and Satan and all of those who follow him. And there is a good force in the earth. The difference is, is that it's not like Hollywood portrays where you have good versus evil and this great big battle struggle going back and forth. Listen to me, Jesus has already won the fight. He's already won the battle. Amen? And the weapons that he gave us that were to use to counter what it is that Satan does to us here in the earth, if you don't employ them, you're going to get injured by them. Are you listening to me? If you don't employ faith, I believe, therefore I speak. If you don't employ faith, you'll get injured. The scriptures say that you take up the shield of faith, which is able to quench the fiery darts. Did you know that your enemy hurls fiery darts at you? Mm -hmm. They're designed to destroy you. They're designed to make you sick. They're designed to kill you. They're designed to injure you. They're designed to upset you. They're, are you listening to me? And the Bible says that the shield of faith quenches them. Amen. Hallelujah. So angels are listening they're hearkening to the word of God. We, we saw this in Psalm 103 and verse 20. It says, Bless the Lord, O you angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Satan's yeah, Satan. Angels obey the word of God. They're listening for the word of God. Why? So they can perform the word of God. So it would seem that what we're learning is that the words we speak matter. Amen? The words we speak matter. The Bible teaches us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Those of you who have been around long enough know that you, words like this should never escape your lips. Oh, my back is killing me. <laughs> right? Come on. Words matter. Words frame your world. Amen? And, by the way, if angels are looking to perform the word of God, then it would mean that Satan and his bunch are looking to perform what other words you're speaking. Oh, uh, things just never work out for me. Uh, you know, just going to go, you know, this is just, we're going to go under, we're not going to make it. No, no, you don't understand, it's all over for us, we're cooked, we're done. Stick a fork in us, we're done. Come on. They will accommodate you. I said, they will help you. Make sure that you are done. Make sure that you are cooked. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. I am the head of every situation and not the tail. Huh. I had to remind myself a lot of that this week. How about you? I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and never beneath. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the country. I am blessed going in. I am blessed going out. I am blessed. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I am a success going somewhere to happen. Amen. You might want to try that yourself. Let's, let's see if we can help you. I am a success am a going somewhere to happen. I, I can't help it. I'm going somewhere to happen. I'm going to be a success. Why? The word of God is around me. His angels are encamped about me. They're looking to perform the word of God. So if I'm speaking the word of God, they'll bring it to pass for me. 
God will back me up. Oh, all of heaven is backing me up. Woo! Glory said all of heaven is backing me up. You're not alone. I said you're not in the fight alone. The enemy likes to use that tactic. Right? It's not a weapon. It's a tactic. You know, you're the only one that's going through this. This is special. It's been cooked up just for you. <laughs> Nobody out there understands what it is that you're going through. And you know what else? You're a terrible person and God doesn't like you very much. <laughs> that's why nothing ever works out for you. Because you're a terrible, awful sinner and God just doesn't like you. Liar! Right. Jesus said when he speaks... He lies. He is the father of lies. That word father means initiator. If it's in your ear telling you you can't make it, if it's in your ear telling you you're going under, if it is in your ear saying this is it for you, you're cooked, that's not God speaking to you. Amen. There's an adversary out there trying to convince you through your thoughts, through your emotions, through your feelings, through circumstance, and yes, even through other people, that the word of God doesn't work for you. And it's all a lie. Are you listening to me tonight? Angels are waiting to perform the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know. Did you see this over here? Well, let me ask you a question. Is Jesus the anointed one? He is, right? That word anointed. Let me come out here and talk. I'm not going to come out here and talk to you. I'm going to stand in the pulpit and teach for a minute. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Jesus is the Messiah. That word in the Greek, Messiah, means anointed one. What does that mean? It means that God's presence was on his life. Amen. Can you separate the anointed one from his anointing? You cannot, can you? Jesus announced in Luke's gospel in the fourth chapter, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach the gospel. So we need to know what that word anoint means. Right, in charismatic camps, you know, word of faith camps, we throw it around and have no idea what we're talking about. The word anoint is literally in the Greek, krios. Right? It means to paint or to smear. Amen? Now, I had some friends that were in the military, and they would tell me, that one that was over in Iraq in particular, in the first Gulf War, and he was talking about being out on night maneuvers with the 3rd Marines because he was a forward observer. And he would go out there with a laser designator. Amen. You can't see a laser, de la la laser designator with your natural eye, but you could push a button and a laser beam would point at a target. And then F-18s in the sky, way, way, way up there, right? 30,000 feet would drop a bomb. And on the nose of that bomb was, well, a radar detector. And that missile would fly exactly to the spot where the laser was pointing. That's and they call it painting the target. The target is painted. Are you listening to me? So, when you become a Christian, when you come into the house of God, when you entrust God with your life, you now become painted you become designated by God. And what happens to you? The anointing of God. The presence of God begins to attract the favor of God to your life. The blessing of God operates in you, on you, and through you. Oh, my, 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 my. I am painted. Are you listening to me? Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me. So, can you, can, you, can you separate the anointed one from his anointing? The answer is no, you cannot. Jesus and his anointing are together. Now, we see in John's Gospel, in the first chapter, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, the Word was with God in the beginning. And way down there in verse 14, it says, and the word became flesh. flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus was the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. And then the word of God became flesh. And we beheld him as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus. Hmm. So if you can't separate the anointed one 
from his anointing, and he is the word of God, wouldn't it stand just to reason that the anointing of God is on his holy written word? It would, wouldn't it? And if you were speaking the word of God, then the word of God becomes a laser designator which attracts the favor and the presence of God. It makes angels gather around you and say, hey, this guy is speaking the word. This gal is speaking the word. Now we can go do something about it. That's as good a teaching as you're going to get. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, it says here in verse 8, Psalm 103, verse 20. Yeah, glory to God. Keep me as the apple of your eye and hide me under the shadow of your wings. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Psalm 36 and verse 5 says, Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Aren't you glad that his faithfulness reaches to the clouds? Your righteousness is like great mountains. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. Under the shadow of his wings is a place of protection. It's a place that protects you from danger. It's a place that protects you from attack. Psalm 56 says this, Be merciful to me, O God. Aren't you glad he's merciful? Come on, somebody. Uh, did you tune out? Did you go home already? <laughs> Aren't you glad he's merciful? Right? That you don't get what you deserve. I don't get what I deserve. He gives me mercy instead. Every morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lamentations tells us that every morning. Amen. Every morning. His mercies are new. What does that mean? I get a fresh start every morning. If I recognize it. If I speak it out. Lord, you are faithful. Your mercy is new. This morning. Thank you for fresh mercy this morning. Why? Wow, listen, I know I'm about to mess up. I'm about to get on the highway. Someone's about to cut me off. Everybody just keep looking straight ahead. Right? I'll, I'll talk about pastor here for a minute. Right? I'm about to get into the office, and somebody's going to have drunk all the coffee out of the coffee pot and not made any new coffee. Right? Oh <laughs> Co-worker comes by, and these days come by without a mask on. You know, they are God in heaven. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I see people walking around with baseball bats now. <laughs> oh, you don't got a mask on? You don't got a mask on? <laughs> Anyways. Aren't you glad that his mercies are new every morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. It says here in, in Psalm 36 and 6, Your righteousness is like the great mountains. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men. Are you a child of a man? Yeah. You are. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes, you are. I know, I know, but sometimes we get politically correct. Listen, this is not about politics. It's not about being politically correct. You are created in the image of God. God created man. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? And that means women, too, because out of the womb of a man, womb man, he took one of Adam's ribs, didn't he? Now, let me help you out, ladies. We're made out of the dirt of the earth, right? You guys are made out of ribs. You're made out of better material. <laughs> Uh, hallelujah. Go, go where you <laughs> That's just funny. I don't care who you are. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. says here uh, in, in uh, Psalm 56, Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me. For my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will take my refuge until calamities have passed me by. I will cry out to the Most High God who performs all things for me, and he shall send from heaven and he shall save me. Amen. And so I need to come out and talk to you a little bit because I'm running out of time. The bulk of the book of Psalms was written by David. Right? David was the anointed king of Israel. Right? And the bulk of these Psalms that he wrote, the Psalms are a little blind to us. They're literally Psalms that he would sing. Right? He was, he was a gifted musician. Right? And the reason that he was singing songs is because he had spent most of his young adult life 
out in the fields alone, guarding sheep. Now think about this, right? 16, 17, right? 14, 15. He's out in the fields alone, all by himself. And it's not like, you know, modern, you know, where you're like a mile and a half from any road. <laughs> or you can get out your cell phone and call for help if there's an issue. He's out there alone. And so he would write these psalms, and, and we, we are convinced of this because it's the word of God, that they were inspired by God. They were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And much of the psalms that he wrote talk about protection. How God would protect me. Right? How God is always with me. Why? Well, if you listen, if you were out in a million acres with nothing but sheep for company, and it's nighttime, <laughs> and what's that sound? And who's out there? Is there robbers out there? All I I don't have uh, an M16. I don't have an AK-47. I don't have an AR-15. I don't have a revolver. I've got a stick. It's me. And my stick. <laughs> Come on. But he knew about God. He had been taught well by his father. And so while he is out there, he begins to sing these songs about how great God. Can you, can, listen, make the Bible come alive. Can you picture yourself sitting out in the middle of a field with nothing around but sheep for a thousand miles? A hundred miles doesn't really matter, and you've got a fire, and there's no, and it's dark, and there's no television, <laughs> and no smartphone, and you just begin singing songs, and you be singing songs like, "Sure it is dark, but you're my God. I am alone, but you're always." With. Come on, he begins to encourage himself. Come on, by writing songs about what it is that he's going through and how God is with him. And so, and you see it over and over again in the Psalms. I began seeing this theme, under the shadow of his wings. Under the, what is that? David began to get so aware that God's presence was with him, hallelujah, that he was convinced, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me besides still waters. What does that mean? David probably had really good opportunities to be afraid. Scared. Anxious. Worried. So he writes, but you, you restore my soul. Surely, oh man, I could preach surely for about an hour. Surely, goodness and mercy follow me all that it, what? Can you imagine, picture David's out, out walking sheep, right? In the wood, it's crazy. Listen, dark, sound behind him. Could be a wolf, could be a lion, could be a bear, could be a wild, any kind of wild dogs. Surely, goodness and mercy <laughs> are following me. Listen, he got so filled with the presence of God and so filled with faith in God's protection that he kept writing and singing over and over again under his wings. Amen? Amen. So I'd like to take you to a story. Yeah, in 1 Samuel 17. Yeah. Tick tock, tick tock. Here we go. In 1 Samuel 17. If you could throw that up, uh, James, that'd be great. David... His father, Jesse, calls him in and says, listen, go find out what's happening to your brothers up there on the front line against the Philistines. Bring them some cheese, bring them some bread. We can preach about cheese and bread, I'm not going to do it. Shows up, wants to see how his brothers are doing, and as he's walking up the path, here comes Goliath. Yeah. He's over on that side of the valley, and he makes this challenge, right? Let Someone come fight me. And if you win, we'll serve you. But if we win, if I win, you'll serve us. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine?
Philistine that dared challenges the army of the living God. Do you hear it in his voice? I serve a living God. And he calls them uncircumcised. Now that's important. We don't look at in you know, today's culture, right? Because circumcision is just not that big of a deal. In, in the Old Testament, circumcision was a sign. It was a covenant that you belong to God. So what was he saying? This no covenant, curd dog, mongrel is calling out us who has a covenant with the living God. And he gets so exercised that he begins to make an Oh, by the way, I probably should parenthetically insert this. The king has made a decree. Whoever defeats him never has to pay taxes again for the rest of his life. And by the way, gets my daughter in marriage, which means you're living in the king's house. Yeah. yeah. What a deal. That's a good deal. <laughs> no taxes. Get the girl. Come on. It's like a movie today. Dear Lord, what was that? Yeah, Armageddon, right? Armageddon said, hey, we don't want to pay taxes ever again. We do this, we go up there and blow up this rock. We don't ever want to pay taxes again. Dear Lord. So, he, 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 he's talking to the king. And he says here in 1 Samuel 17, 34, Whenever a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it. Are you here? Listen, he got so filled with faith that God would protect him, that when a lion showed up and took a sheep, listen, most shepherds would be like, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> you're, on, you're on your own. <laughs> Mutton chops. <laughs> you should have been paying attention. Right? No, not David. What did David say? He said, I went after the lion. Yeah. I went after the bear. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I went after, verse 35 says, I struck it and I rescued the sheep from its mouth. It attacked me. Oh, I'm sorry. If it attacked me. How many of you know, you're going up to a lion that has just stolen a sheep and you smack it and you take the sheep out of his mouth. What you, if? You know that lion's going, I am eating you, I'm eating the sheep, and when you're both gone, I'm going after the whole flock. It's all mine. Are you listening to me? Now, if I, if I overlay this with Satan, that Satan is the one that comes and steals, as a pastor, my job, my role, my function, is if the devil comes to try to pick one of you off, it's my job to go after him. Yeah, and you know what I do? I do, I go after him. In prayer. Huh? And you know what he tries to do? He tries to attack me. I didn't come to this fight alone. <laughs> I came armed for bear. <laughs> Are you listening to me? He said, if it attacked me, I grabbed it by the mane. We don't, we don't make the Bible come alive. Because I've seen videos of lions. And I've seen videos of bears. Right? Maybe you've been to the zoo and you might have seen one up close. They're not small animals. Right? A 700 pound bear shows up and says, oh, I'm going to take that sheep. And what do you do? You walk up and you hit it. Give me back that sheep. And if it turns to attack you, he says, you know what I did? I killed it. I killed it. It says, right, I took a hold of its mane, struck it, and killed it. I have killed lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of those because he has challenged the armies of the living God. And then David added, the Lord who saved me from the lion and the bear, he'll save me from this Philistines. Are you listening? Or from this Philistine. And now let me just start to unhook here before I get the story of David and Goliath is worldwide it is still being told to this day and if any sports commentator if any talking head on the new, if anybody says it's like a David and Goliath you know immediately what it means it mean, there was an impossible foe there was a larger than life 
enemy. There was impossible odds. But David was so filled with under the shadow of his wings, so filled with faith in God's ability to keep him, that he was going barehanded up against lions and bears. And so I'll finish here, because, you know, how do you get to that place? Pastor, how do you get to the place of being kept? How do I stay there? What do I do? Well, we looked at it. I think it was the very first session that we did on this topic. That the Lord will keep me. Psalm 91 says, He, she, who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide. Now that word is a little blind to us in modern vernacular. Abide means you're supposed to live there. It means to dwell. It means to live. He says uh, that if you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, hallelujah, is God able to keep me there? Amen. Is, he, is he able to protect me when I'm there? Mm -hmm. is, how, how do I get there? How do I get under the shadow of the Almighty? How do I make the Lord my keeper? I will say of the Lord. Psalm 91 verse 2. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. How do you get there? The words that are coming out of your mouth. Lord, you're protecting me. Lord, I dwell under the shadow of your wings. And I am protected there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, yeah. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Some of you, some of you just need to get those words out of your mouth. Oh, I got a couple of, couple of nods. But that's not going to do it. The devil doesn't care about your nodding. What he's interested in is the words coming out of your mouth. I will say of the Lord. Say it out loud. Lord, Lord you are my refuge. You are my, refuge. You are my peace. You are my, peace. You are my rock. You're my strength. You're my shield. You're my hope. You're my redeemer. You're my healer. You are all in all. I will say of the Lord. He is my God. In Him do I trust. The Lord not only can keep me, the Lord is able to keep me. Surely, here we are back to surely, surely, no question, no doubt, surely, surely, He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Can God keep me there? Can God keep me protected? Surely. He will deliver you. Surely, when weapons are formed against you, surely He will do it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. And can you take a little more? Because verse 4 goes on and says, He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. And His truth, somebody say His word, his word. will be your shield and your buckler. You'll not be afraid of the terror that flies by, or the arrows that fly by day. You'll not be afraid of pestilence. Somebody say, I'm not afraid of COVID. I'm not afraid of COVID. No, 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 I can mean it. I'm not afraid of COVID. Right? There is no pestilence that will come near me. It goes on in the psalm. It says, no plague will come near your tent. Is COVID a plague? No plague will come near my tent. COVID made a mistake the day it showed up in my world. Why? It died. Amen. The minute it tried touching me, it died. It tried. It, it tried. I'm sure it did. <laughs> but the minute it got into my realm, the minute that it recognized I am under the shadow of the Almighty, it died. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Better stop or we'll be here all night long. Surely he shall deliver you. Surely. Surely. He'll deliver you from the snares of the fowler and from perilous pests. Surely, someone say it out loud. Surely, surely. he will deliver you from COVID. Surely, sure, surely. Nah, yeah, yeah, some of you are pulling back on me. I, I can, I can sense it here in the inside. Surely, you know, you know what it is. You've been feeding your spirit too much. 
on CNN and ABC and Fox News and I don't know, whatever else it is you're reading online. Surely, surely, surely he shall deliver me. Amen. There is no sickness that has a right to my body. Right. There, there is none. I'm under the shadow of his wings. He'll protect me from lions and bears. I don't know what your lions are. I don't know what your bears are. I don't know what it is that you face on a daily basis. I know that you're facing some of the same lions and bears that I'm facing. Amen? And here is how you get through it. I will say of the Lord, he is my shield. Amen? Hallelujah. Stand your feet, everybody. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your holy written word.